Blood Surf is a year 2000 creature feature directed by James D. R. Hickox. A small film crew travel to a beautiful island with two daredevil surfers to capture their new extreme sport, blood surfing. Using blood to attract sharks and then surfing among them ends up being the least of their worries however when they discover the island is also home to a giant man-eating crocodile. But before I get into this amazing mess I just wanted to ask if you could please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. It would really help me out. So thanks. <laughs> oh we're gonna have fun with this one let me tell you. But I am going to spoil this 24 year old B-movie so be warned. First of all I just want to say that the poster art for this film is absolutely badass. I mean it's a dude surfing a giant wave in between the jaws of a gigantic crocodile. When I first saw this I was convinced well this is clearly going to be the best film ever. Was I wrong? Let's dive into blood surf and find out. So the movie begins with an eyeball remembering a boat crash and the survivors being eaten by something under the water. But what I wonder? We then meet our main cast on board a little plane. Among them is the beautiful camera operator Cecily, surfers Jeremy and Bog, and the director Zach. Jeremy looks like the sort of person who's never been on time for an appointment in his life. Bog appears to be completely off his tits on something and looks like the singer of OPM. And Zach, on the other hand, looks like some sort of bizarre fusion of Seth MacFarlane and Max Minghella. So, I'm going to call him Sax McMingfella. Anyway, they arrive at their destination, but no one will tell them how to get to the island they want to film at. So while they figure things out, they all grab a drink and gawk at a dancing girl who looks about 15. Mm. That is until the fearless boat captain Dax butts in. She's his girl, you see. Man, this guy has a stare so intense it could rip the pants off you from a mile away. Dax tells the crew how to get to the island, and a local girl called Lemia and her folks agree to give them a boat ride. So before long, they're on their way to do some blood surfing. Gotta love the soundtrack too. It absolutely slaps. I think blood surfing in itself is a crazy enough idea to make a fun movie around, but I love the fact that they just thought, nah man, that's not mental enough. Ah, fuck it, let's just throw a giant crocodile into the mix too. Anyway. The crocodile attacks one of the sharks at what I assume was about 500 mile an hour because the bloody thing explodes! Needless to say, it looks a bit odd to our humans on the beach. So Bog and Lemia sneak off for some steamy swamp loving, where afterwards she admits to him that she's only 17. But don't worry Bog, before you can say sex offender, Lemia is killed off screen by our scaly menace. Meanwhile, the group find that their boat, along with Lemia's parents, have been sunk, so Jeremy goes for a dip and we're treated to a Jaws-esque jump scare, albeit somewhat less effective. In other words, it's shit. Then our demolition expert crocodile starts exploding the jetty as the group flee into the jungle. And just in case their day couldn't get any worse, the group run into a band of pirates, the jovial leader of which conveniently speaks better English than me. The group are taken to the pirate's boat at gunpoint, then they all make light of the situation by pretending Cecily is Australian and not American so the pirate leader won't have his way with her. Um, what? Don't worry though, because before anything can happen the crocodile jumps out of the water and snatches the bad man off the balcony with gravity defying grace. The other pirates are swiftly dealt with as the guys push them into the water, permanently incapacitating them, as it would. Although the jovial one washes up on the shore and shoots the boat which causes it to catch fire and explode. So. After all the chaos, and this made me laugh my ass off, Dax just turns up out of the blue in a fucking dinghy smoking a cigar. <laughs> oh, I wish this guy was in everything. So Dax tells everyone he isn't leaving the island until the croc is dead, because he was the eyeball at the beginning of the movie. Oh, and Zack, I mean, Sax McMinfella, wants to film and capture and kill it, because of course he does. So they end up snagging the croc on a fishing line. Incest does probably the stupidest thing I've ever seen in a movie. She jumps in the water to film it. Of course, the croc gets free and attacks the boat, knocking Bog in a chomping range. But surely they wouldn't kill Bog. Not Bog! Dax leans over to him and instead of simply pulling him to safety, he hands him a knife and Bog... <laughs> oh, I can't even see him without laughing. He jumps on the bloody crocodile's head and tries to stab it. Oh, Bog, you were doing so well up to this point. Actually, no he wasn't. He's been off his fucking head the whole film. But the crocodile ain't messing around and tosses poor Bog into the air. 
Then Bog finds out if heaven truly is a half pipe, as his bleach blonde five head is dragged into the depths. So by this point the boat is in a bit of a state and Dax plans to go down with the ship by blowing it up along with the croc. As you can imagine this goes about as well as Bog's attempt at noggin stabbing and then Dax gets bitten in half and the effects here are brilliantly awful. The croc ain't done yet though as Sax McMingfella decides to take a shortcut and ride a wave to shore on a surfboard but the absolute bell end accidentally rides it straight into the croc's open mouth. Oh man, that has got to suck. So it's just Jeremy and the ladies now, but before he can get the girl he goes and picks up Dax's explosives so they can turn Mr Croc into a handbag. Their catastrophically baffling plan is to lure the Croc into the alcove of some ruins, which they're all going to be standing in by the way, and then proceed to blow up the entrance to collapse it on the Croc's head. I mean, fucking, why? Why didn't you just put it on the ground and wait for the Croc to walk over it? It's not like the bloody thing's going to purposefully avoid it, is it? But no, they prefer to put themselves in unnecessary danger. I mean, I don't know why I'm expecting any logical thinking from this lot at this point, but bloody hell. I'll never work. Oh, except it does work. Typical. The croc is 100% dead and clearly not just unconscious, so as long as they vamoose pretty sharpish, I'm sure they'll be fine. But oh, oh, oh no! Artie, in her infinite wisdom, decides to kick the croc in the face repeatedly for eating Dax. Good lord. Which puts her in convenient proximity to its jaws. And then, surprising no one, the beast comes back to life and eats her. I'm pretty sure the entire cast of this film could have avoided being eaten if they didn't do the stupidest bloody thing possible in the moment. Now we're in the final stretch of the film, and if there was any tension, we'd probably be feeling it now. Jeremy and Cess run for their lives with the croc hot on their tail. They slide down a steep hill and after grabbing a deus ex machina vine, they swing to safety and the croc falls to a spiky death on the rocks below, revealing that it was just a toy crocodile full of jelly all along. So yeah, Jeremy and Cess decide to get busy instead of leaving the island because of course they do. And that's the end of the film. Wonderful. Okay, you know what? As ridiculous as this film is and as terrible as the effects are, I kind of actually love it. It's without a doubt a so bad it's good movie, and one that is surely more enjoyable with a bunch of friends and some beers. So, Blood Surf, what did you think of it? Did you like it? Did you loathe it? Let me know in the comments below, and if you could please like and subscribe to my channel, it would make me very happy. But above all else, thanks for watching.